What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another Tottenham update. And, you know, I said to Sim about two hours before we left the studio yesterday, I said, I guarantee you, as soon as we get into the car, as soon as we leave the studio, that second Lengley is going to be announced. Because we were waiting for it all day. We were waiting to make that <laughs> Lengley announcement video all day. But as soon as we did leave the studio, it got announced. But like uh, London buses as well, you wait so long for one and then two come along. I know Richarlison did get announced uh, last week, but finally we're seeing him in the Spurs shirt. Finally, um, we're getting to see all the content that we've been waiting for for so long. But let's start off with uh, Clement Longley because he was the brand new signing that did get announced yesterday. Uh, we've seen him in the Spurs shirt. Let's go and have a look at it, actually, because... Uh, it's it's a beautiful sight to be honest. It's a beautiful sight, and I for one are really mm. looking forward to this signing. Yeah, and I'm glad we're just getting it done early, uh, and I'm glad that we've uh, made the decision to get him in. Here's the official. That's the uh, first um, video Tottenham released on the signing of Clement Longley, um, representing five our fifth signing of the summer, which is incredible. We're on July the 9th, although the Premier League season isn't too far away, to be fair, um, but. It's, un it's unbelievable that we've uh, it's 9th of July we have five signings um mm. obviously this is the this was the um welcome to Clement Longley as well um I'm glad that we it, it doesn't give the aura that we're going even though it's obvious that he wasn't our first choice that, that's clear that's clear from who we were going for he doesn't as well um, seem like a panic buy. He doesn't seem like one near the end of the window where we haven't got a target, so we just have to get someone through the door. Clearly, he's someone that we think could do a really good job um, for Tottenham. I think it's clear that we we rate him and his qualities. And I think as well, um, I think he has the qualities we need f specifically for our left centre-back role or, or centre-back role in terms of how he plays um, his stats, I think. I think the scouting department probably look at him and think he can do a, a really good job for us. So uh, it's only a loan deal as well, so very low risk. It's not like it's um, a deal that uh, you're, you're thinking we spend a lot of money on him and we're going to have to waste a lot of it. It's a loan deal. If it doesn't work out, we, we send him back. So I think it makes a lot of sense if uh, we can't get our first choice targets right now. Um, but on the other hand, it's a bit frustrating because the whole narrative is, um, you know, Conte's here to win now. Conte is not here to build a project. He's a um, short-term manager and we can't give him his first choice target, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully he surprises um, he, he surprises everyone and, uh, and is brilliant for us. Look, I think it's, um, it's a testament to um, the planning and uh, precision that has gone into this window by Paratici and Conte and even Daniel Levy as well. I think it's a testament to that because... In future, in past windows, um, if we can't get our first targets, well, we would settle uh, for less. And Clement Longley, he's a player that's been chased by Antonio for the past couple of years, even for the event for um, Inter Milan. And I think that, like you say, he's a player that represents um, good attributes for this system, for this team. Someone that can come in straight away and get and knuckle down with things. I believe anyway. Um, he hasn't had a good thing, time of things at Barcelona. But at the end of the day, the first choice targets were Gvardio and Bastoni. And we weren't able to get them in. No fault to our own. Uh, Bastoni didn't want to leave into Milan. And RB Leipzig uh, don't want to let rid of Gvardio. And Gvardio doesn't want to leave there this summer. So I think the way uh, we've planned this window is brilliant because two players that were our first choice targets that could be coming available next summer. We bring in Lengle on loan, see how he does. We test the waters with him first. And then if not, then we can go for our first choice targets again uh, next summer. So I think it's been good planning uh, from Tottenham Hotspur. I'm, I'm happy that we haven't settled for someone maybe third or fourth choice down the line and actually sign them up on a permanent deal. So I think it's a really good deal. Um, I think he's going to get back to uh, where he was with Seville under Antonio Conte, back in a system which he's used to as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I can't wait to see that, those pings over the top from uh, Clement Longley. Yeah, his passing range for sure is something to be excited about. He's clearly a very good passer out the back. And that should definitely help with how Conte likes to play um, with his building from the back, from his back three. And also with his centre-backs looking to um, uh, find long passes over the top to the likes of Son and Kane and Kulusevski and passes in between the lines. And although Davis is um, good at that, I think, I think that hopefully Longley takes it to a new level. And that's what I'm excited about. And I think 
um, just rebuilding his confidence as well. I think there's a real, really good player in there. I, I remember in his early days at Barcelona and in Sevilla, him being a fantastic centre-back. Um, one that um, was playing really well, was playing for France as well at the time. And hopefully he just gets back to those levels. And that, that's what um, we're all looking forward to. And let's be honest as well. Uh, we can talk about how um, Barca fans didn't rate him and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, Tottenham, as we've said before, Tottenham fans didn't rate Davis or Dyer, you know, a, a year ago or even less. So um, things can change very quickly in football. A new environment, a new system, uh, new players. Hopefully um, that all goes in a positive direction positive direction um for getting long lay back to his best and i'm i'm quite excited about him to be honest he's still 27 still still a good age as well so and here just on the screen just confirming that he's subject to a work permit so pretty much confirming that he probably isn't going to create although he has uh he did observe training i think there's a video of that um I think it's the video. No, it's his his interview. There's a video of him. Here he is. Uh, but behind the scenes, Tottenham uh, released meeting all the teammates and everything. Um, so he has met everyone. Um, and but I don't think it's, it looks like he's not going to be going uh, to Korea uh, mm. unless he goes late. But it seems unlikely. Yeah, and also it's worth noting that I think he joined Barcelona in what was it, 2018? Um, yeah, 2018. And mm -hmm. he must have he must have impressed a little bit because by 2020 he got a brand new six year contract um, at Barcelona. So well, I was, I was been... reading an article. I read an article about uh, it was written I think in 2019, and it was about it was from a Barca fan saying uh, Longley has quietly become one of the best centre backs in Europe, and they were they were loving him. Him and PK were forming a really good partnership. Um, and I think he, uh, because of the way he plays as well, I think it really suited Barcelona. But I think Barca have been in turmoil for a few years now. Let's be honest; they just they just dropped out into Europa League last season. Uh, it's not like they did great when he wasn't playing, even though he only played seven appearances in uh, La Liga. Um, I think that they they've been changing managers. There's been a lot of upheaval. Um, I don't think it's the best measure of exactly uh, how good. Uh, he can potentially be, and let's be let's be honest. Juventus fans hated Bentancur and Kulusevski. They couldn't get, couldn't wait to get rid of them. And look how well they've done at us. So I think maybe we're a better place right now um, to be uh, nurturing these players, and maybe um, uh, we're a better, we're just a better place, a better structure right now because we've got a, a Conte at the helm. He's got his settled system. He knows what he wants. Um, so I think we're just we're we're at a good place. I think Conte is known for improving his players. So. I don't read too much into the fact that Barca fans haven't rated him of late because I think we've we've got a, um, form for changing opinions. Yeah, but you know, everyone says that he's a Barca reject and he didn't get on a Barca. That's not true because the first two years he was at Barca, like you say, Barca fans were saying he's quietly becoming one of the best defenders in Europe. And on top of that, the bias Barca hierarchy gave him a new six-year contract. So they must have believed in him some way. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it has fallen off the rails recently, but it has done for, for the majority of people that have been at Barcelona recently. So um, I think everyone should get really behind the signing and get excited about this signing because what Conte wanted was competition around every area of the pitch. And this is what this brings. So happy days. Let's move Definitely. on and let's talk about our new uh, Brazilian number nine, R9, Richarlison. He's finally been pictured in the Spurs shirts. He's uh, come to Hotspur Way and met all his teammates. And let's go and have a look at uh, that. Well, there you go. I love it. This was, uh, pretty, love this was the introduction <laughs> to uh, Richarlison at Hotspur Way, um, which was... a. Uh, you know, classic Richarlison. Apparently, he's known to being a bit of a character in the dress room and he's being a bit goofy and stuff like that. So, um, that was his first video. And obviously, there was confirmation him and his time show. Obviously, he was being out in Brazil, so he hasn't really had the chance to do all the um, all the media stuff. But here he is. Uh, we're holding the Tottenham shirt, absolutely love to see it. Um, then obviously he's doing all his media. He will be wearing the number nine, which was uh, confirmed a few days ago. Uh, and he said that he um, he got like butterflies in his stomach when he heard that Tottenham win for him and that, um, you know, they, the offer came in Brazil. He couldn't believe it. And he can't wait to be playing, playing Champions League. He's only ever watched Champions League on TV and it's a dream to be playing. So it's, it's a massive move for him. Uh, obviously a big statement from Spurs. And I can't wait to see him, in a, um, see him be on the pitch for us. Yeah, again, I don't think he's um, 
he's here to take the spot off Sonny, take the spot off Kane. But what it represents is amazing squad depth and amazing um, competition for places. So I think, you know, how many times did we hear? Well, we heard a few times that Harry Kane was playing in the red zone in terms of fitness and stuff like that. And a player like Richarlison is going to do so well um, to alleviate Harry Kane of that. And not only that, but with five subs coming in, he's going to see a lot of game time. And I really think he's going to be our Diego Jota and he can get many goals, many assists and help the team in such a big way next season. And again, another one I literally can't wait for. And uh, let's let's have a look. Go on. Yeah, no, God. Sorry, no, I'm saying he's, he's been playing. He's going to be playing loads of games, Champions League. Like he's going to have a massive, massive role to play. Even if it is coming on a lot of the time for the last half an hour of games against tired legs, even that is going to be very a vital role as well. But it just gives us, um, it give it do, it just gives us a uh, a way of resting Son and, and and Kane if we if we want to. Um, we could we don't have to think twice about it. We can, you know, before there's like a big decision. Now it doesn't have to be such a big decision. It can just be okay. Richarlison starting this week, and that's it. Like, and and if he's in good form, he'll get the shirt. I'm sure he will. Uh, and that's just how it will be because he's that good a player. I think. Um, you know, hopefully, he gets to a stage where he is starting games, and we don't even think about it. And it can even become a, an option at, in some points, maybe at the start of games against low block teams, or maybe later on in the game against low block teams when we move to a three five two. Put Richarlison and Sonny up top, and Kane in behind. I mean, what a dynamic and um, absolutely amazing front three that would be, all on the pitch together. What about four of them? So, uh, Kane and Son up front, Richarlison off the left, and Kulusevski off the right. <laughs> yeah. We really need it. Uh, you know, could you never be. know. That could be something we could we could do um, if if. Uh, if the situation needs it. So we've got some real uh, good firepower now and I'm just very, very excited. Yeah, obviously the big uh, thing everyone was talking about was uh, Richarlison meeting Romero, but here's how it went. If people are interested, big smile, here's a hug. And there you go. Didn't didn't embrace for too long, but uh, you see Lucas Mora uh, um, Eric and Eric Dyer uh, giving it a round of applause. So I think uh, the players were anticipating it as much as the fans. Um, I wouldn't say it was the warmest of uh, embraces, but there was... Yeah, it looked a bit smiles. awkward to me. looked a bit awkward and forced to me, but I, I have no doubt that these two will become the best of mates. I mean, they've got the same kind of mentality, don't they? So I think... Um, Give it a time. Once uh, they they spent a bit of time a week together in Korea, I'm sure they'll come back best and mates. Yeah, exactly. You know, they. I'm sure. Look, they. they I think the big smiles. I think they wanted to make make sure that there was no animosity there. So, look, I I, I agree. I think they're going to be uh, brilliant teammates, good mate, good friends. Um, that their mentality is similar. That's probably why they clash so much. So, I think it's going to be um. A match made in a match made in heaven. I hope uh, for the future. But you can see the players as well how they reacted to it. You can see they. Yeah. they all, Everyone all, knows the history there. Hundred <laughs> percent. Everyone knows the history. Uh, and, and when it comes to uh, Romero as well, there is a bit of news when it comes to Romero and Oli Skip. Two number changes for next season. Mm. Romero will be wearing. A lot 17. of people, by the way, have bought the new shirt with Romero number four on the back. Oh well, surely the club have got to do something about that because yeah. they've changed. Well, they've changed it. Skip will be wearing number four, and Romero seventeen, which uh, apparently he wore like at Genoa that. and uh, Atalanta. We well, like were actually told we, we, we got a DM. We got a DM uh, last week saying Romero was changing his number. But, mm, um, true, we did. Yeah, we didn't really say anything. Yeah, and here we are. Um, I'm loving the four for Skippy. That um, you know shows his the trust in the manager from him, in my opinion. But giving him number mm-hmm. four shirt is big. Is big for an academy graduate, someone who I believe could potentially well be Spurs captain um, in a number of years. So Romero getting his favoured number again. So happy days. Uh, just before um, we move on, I just wanted to you know Eric Dyer actually posted a clip of uh, Richarlison and Kuti Romero uh, hugging in the. Well, we just saw and he just quoted it saying, this had me and loads of uh, laughing emojis. So I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> Brilliant. Is that, on, uh, Spurs, is that on Spurs Express? Maybe I can get it. No, nah, it's on Instagram. Oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh it is on the Brilliant. Spurs Express. There you go. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Look, hey, look they'll, they'll get on. I'm sure they'll get on. And it'll be, it's going yeah. to be fine. 
the atmosphere in the dressing room is going to be something else this season. I, I got a yeah. feeling this this squad is really going to come together and there's going to produce something special. I mean, I know a little kid um, asked Antonio Conte. I'm not sure where it was. They asked him, Antonio, are, you, um, are we going to win the league this year? And he's like, yeah. Do you not think so? Yeah, it <laughs> so, was... Uh, um, he we can win I the saw league. that. It was... Uh, he was... Uh, I think it's also here. He was, it was Alba's car. Uh, maybe it wasn't here. But I saw the, I saw the clip on... Um, I saw the clip on Twitter. It was just uh, he was driving out the training ground and he stopped to sign the the kid's shirt and the kid asked him asked him if we're going to win the Premier League. He was like, uh, "Yeah, well, do you not think so?" Like that, yeah. Just like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Oli sure. T, was it? I don't think so. Because he was so. outside the training ground meeting Lengley yesterday. Um, but anyway, let's move on. So that's the Richarlison and Lengley uh, stuff. Next up, Glongari is talking about Jaffet Tanganga, and he says Tanganga is tempted by an Italian transfer with Napoli and AC Milan interested. However, there's also been requests on loan from Southampton and Everton. So if if uh, if it was up to you, what would you do? Would you send him on loan to a Premier League side, or would you give him uh, sell him to Italy? If it's a loan deal, um, it'll be Premier League. If it's permanent, Italy. That's probably how I see it. Um, may, what for would you him, it probably. That's what I'm saying. That's why. What would you mean? Oh, what, what would I prefer? prefer loan to you... Premier, yeah. loan to Premier League, or a sale to Italy? Um, mm. pro- I think I'll probably prefer a loan to uh, Premier League, just because if there is a chance we could use him uh, um, as a starter in the future, I would like to take that. If I was Tanganga, I think the chance to go to AC Milan and Napoli, who want to sign you permanently and probably going to give you regular minutes, would be uh, very difficult to turn down. Mm, I agree. All right, uh, that's the Tanganga situation. Seems as though things are halting up. It'd be interesting um, if Tanganga is not on the list for Korea. I'm sure we'll find out that today. Uh, but if the yeah. transfer is kind of round the corner, then I don't really expect him to be on that plane to Korea, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see how that one plans out. Next up, Jed Spence. Ali Gold uh, was talking on the Guest and Gold podcast, and he's claiming that Barra are one of the clubs interested in loaning Troy Parrott and suggests that that could be key in finally getting the Spence deal over the line after long negotiations between Gibson and and Levy. And I think that would be a good deal all round and it will benefit both parties. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. He would get him championship experience. Obviously, we get Jed Spencer, who we've been uh, uh, going for for a long time now. Um, this this deal keeps dragging on and on and on. Um, hopefully, they're close to resolution. I think Ali Gold didn't have said something, something that uh, he feels like we are close to resolution, but who knows? We've heard it so many times. But I think it would be a brilliant move for Troy Parrott. Hopefully, he get to test himself in the championship again and see if he's ready for that kind of level. Um, so I'd be excited for him. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on him if he was going to Bayern next season. We've spoken about before finding the right loan move for players in terms of style of play, football. Um, Chris Wilder being the manager of Middlesbrough, if I'm right in saying, if he's the manager mm. of Middlesbrough, does that represent a good loan then for you for Troy Parrott? Um, I think so. Obviously, I think Sheffield United... Well, we, you know, you can call them a defensive team. They played that three-five-two system, though, and maybe with a strike partner um, that could help him um, take the burden off. If he's not, if he's not doing everything by himself, trying to hold the play up, he's got someone to play off. Um, and they did play good football at times, especially in the championship. They were a decent footballing mm-hmm. side. So, I think, uh, especially because he came halfway through last season, didn't he? I think, or, or uh, midway f- or uh, partway through the season. So hopefully the preseason under under, under the, his belt under Chris Wilder, they'll be playing a lot more his way. So I think it'll be a good move for him. All right, and finally, I want to talk about Dennis Serkin, uh, which is an interesting one. I was actually speaking to a Sunderland fan last night on social media, and um, Serkin was out for a lot of the season uh, last year, injured, but. I think the last three months of the season came back and apparently he was absolutely brilliant for those last three months of the season and was quite central to getting them, uh, you know, promotion back to the championship and stuff like that. Spurs actually have a buyback clause in in Serkin's contract. Do you think if he has a good season in the championship next year, it's something we're going to look at? I mean, it depends how good he's really been. If... if, uh... He has to be, uh, can't just be good. He has to kind of be outstanding, doesn't he? Um, mm. In the championship to really look at buying. If he has back. like a, you know, a Jed Spence kind of season at left back, I think he'd be one that we'd probably look at. 
Yeah, potentially. Depends what um what the left what the uh, well with obviously with Perisic being thirty three. Uh, he's obviously not going to be around in the long term, is he? So we should be probably looking at another left wing back or left back in the future. In the in the future, it depends because he's obviously a left back. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of circumstances um, surrounding it because obviously is Conte going to be here for that long? Is Serkin a left a left back or can he play left wing back? Is he good enough to do that kind of job in a Conte system? Um, is he just a full back? So I don't know. It's probably too early to say whether we'd look at that, but but. If the circumstances grant it, and he's good enough for sure. Why wouldn't we? Uh, because he was very highly rated under Mourinho. Mm, yeah, and Poch. But you know, I'll caveat that with saying that he also told me that Alex Pritchard was their best player and uh, central to everything, uh, getting them promoted. Oh, there you go. They, they're they're building up a bit of a um, a bit of a Spurs relationship there. Jack Clark now, Dennis Serkin, Alex Pritchard. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on them in the championship next year, that's for sure. But anyway, that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Yeah!